Let's see an earmarks up there. Earmarks is a bad we word. Keep doing that. We keep doing that. Well, we, we shall keep doing that. At the last town hall, you correctly stated that Social Security did not contribute to the deficit. Why then do you talk about it when speaking about the debt? Well, I think that the thing that you have to realize, if you looked at the chart, we don't have enough Americans that are paying into the system to continue to make Social Security viable. So what do we end up doing? We end up borrowing money to make sure that Social Security is viable. One of the terrible things that happened, Social Security once upon a time was in an independent trust fund account. And when it was taken out of an independent trust fund account, and it was used, as the gentleman was saying, for wasteful spending and earmarks and things of that nature, now we have graded it, and it's an IOU program. And then the other thing is that we don't have enough Americans that are out there working to help to replenish it. So the biggest thing we got to do, get Americans back to work, get it back replenished, get it back into an independent trust fund account, so we don't have politicians up there raping it uh, for future generations. So those are the things that we have to do with Social Jody Albright, MD. Why are you supporting significant cuts in social services while protecting large corporate tax cuts and loopholes? Who is going to stand up for the working people? Well, I think I stand up for the working people and saying that I want working people to get back to work. I think that's the whole part of the small business program. <laughs> You know, obviously people don't understand who I am. Because I've always said, I wouldn't give anybody a bailout. Because if you're in the corporate sector and you have bad business practices, guess what? You go away. That's part of the thing. So, you know, when I say that you flatten it out 20 to 22%, what I've always said, get rid of loopholes. Get rid of the subsidies. I mean, one of the most heinous subsidy out there is the corn ethanol subsidy. Yeah. So those are the type of things that I always believed in. And you know, go down and talk to some of these local community banks. They're getting crushed. But it's the big banks that the, you know the government is propping up. It's the big banks that people aren't available. I mean, follow the money of Goldman Sachs. Look at how many people from Goldman Sachs are working up in Washington, D.C. If you have an administration, if you have people in Washington, D.C. to start to pick the winners and the losers, that's not the free market. That's not free market. No, no subsidies, no bailouts, none of this stuff. And both sides are guilty of that. So let's not go ahead. Fred Scheibel of uh, Palm Beach County, given that we have reached the debt limit, the Treasury plans to raid the employee pension fund. Can Congress insist they cut spending instead? You know, one of the frustrating things that I have is that, you know, it seems every time some of this stuff happens, they send most of us out of Washington, D.C. And uh, I'm very concerned about what could happen while Congress is not in session. We don't need to be raiding pension funds. I'm telling you the thing that we have to do is we've got to turn the spotlight on us up there in Washington, D.C. I just said there's $200 billion of duplicative programs in Washington, D.C. that a report said and no one did a thing about. That's a great starting point that we can launch on. You know, when you look at the 13 different off appropriations bills that the House of Representatives produces, and I said this before, there's no priority on those appropriations bills. What's the most important appropriations bill? What's the essential function of government? What's the priorities? You know, if, if nothing, if everything is a priority, then nothing is a priority. And that's the frustrating thing that I see in Washington, D.C. is that, you know, we get to the point where we're talking about shutting down the government. People don't understand, well, what's, this, what's essential, what's non-essential? I mean, this is, you know, the kind of stuff that people taught me as a second lieutenant back in 1982 and 83, but we're not doing it. So I, I thoroughly agree, we should not be talking about rating pension funds. And I'll also give you a case in point. Uh, 1985, 1995, 2002. Uh, three previous occasions where we went beyond the, uh, the debt limit. And we lasted for like four and a half, five months, okay? Let's not get caught up in the scare tactics. Let's not get caught up in fear mind. 
because you know we can resolve this. But the thing is that if we don't take the right type of action in Washington D.C., it's not going to make it. Christina of Juno Beach. I am concerned about those of us under 54 that have spent more than 30 years paying into Medicare. To now change the rules, don't you think it's kind of Bernie Madoff of you? No, I don't think it's Bernie Madoff, but I tell you what, okay, the option is we do nothing. And then in 2024, you know, come see me when there is no Medicare program, because that's the possibility that we're running into. So uh, I'm 50 years of age, and I know that something has to change for me as we go forward, or else, as I said, there will not be a Medicare. There will not be the ability of this government to own up to the promise that it made to the seniors. So I think that uh, you know, it'd be very easy for me to come down here and tell you that everything's fine, there's nothing to worry about, but I can't lie to you. And I will not lie to you. We have to do something with the form of these programs take it from a fee-for-service to a defined contribution, and then we got to start turning the spotlight on fraud, waste, and abuse. They're in these programs, made Medicare and Medicaid. And when you look at where South Florida ranks, we're pretty high for the fraud, waste, and abuse on those two programs. From Shelly Dean Norris of Lantana, how can you take away my medicine when I have paid into it throughout my life? I'm not taking away anything. I, 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 we're not. But I think that if we don't reform this program, it won't be there for you. And that's the uh, that's the challenge that we face. And uh, I don't know how many times I can show you the facts, show you the numbers, but something has to be done, or else, as the Medicare trustee said last Friday, 2024. That's 13 years. It's not going to be here. Don't take it away from my children either. Uh, we're trying to make sure it's their future. From Jennifer Kelly of um, Jacksonville, what do you think of Medicare as vouchers, and what do you think of raising the retirement age? Well, like I said, it's not, it's not a voucher. Like I said, it's a defined contribution. Um, and then when you look at, you know, what was the second part again? I just, I was, I was thinking. Oh. Steps and bolts. I mean, if you look at that 65 to 69, that makes a difference for the de deficit curve. We're living out to 78 years of age. And, uh, you know, we have to start looking at those different types of alternatives. But I think right now, no one's talking about doing anything different with Social Security. No one's talking about doing anything different with retirement age. But we do, we do have to do something as far as the Medicare and then the Medicaid. I mean, if we take it and we turn it over to the states, we block grant and let them run it, there'll be a whole lot of savings in that program that make it viable, and they can provide, provide the right type of services for the people that need the Medicaid. So those are the options that are out there, and uh, I think those are the very viable options as we go forward. Well, the thing is, you know, it's, it's funny, and, and I'll answer this. It's, it's funny when now, everyone said that, you know, those, those no good, rotten, you know what's up there in Congress, they need to have the same type of health care as everyone else. So all of a sudden, we, we come up with a, a solution that provides people the same type of health care program that a member of Congress has. You know, the, the options that I have to go out with Blue Cross Blue Shield, and people still don't like that. So I don't know what it's going to take to, to make the American people happy, okay? Uh, but I do know this. If we don't... If we don't do it, and like I said once again, I tell you what, let's do nothing. Okay? And then we'll see what happens. Okay? But we have to we have to look at some viable options as we go forward. And this is right now. If you're in the system, if you're 55, nothing changes. But something has to change for my generation, or else there's not going to be anything. You know, it's it's uh it's it's interesting. I have children also. But the, the interesting thing is this. You know, back back in the late 1970s, the government came up with a program that everyone thought was going to be a fantastic program. 
Everyone was cheering. 